Canal. So make sure to watch the full video. The United States began building a canal through a 50-mile section of the congested Panama Isthmus in 1904, after a French construction team's attempt to build it failed in the 1880s. This was the beginning of the Panama Canal. Eliminating disease-carrying mosquitoes aided the project, while chief engineer John Stevens developed creative methods and inspired the essential change from a sea level to a lock canal. Lieutenant Colonel George Washington Gothels, who succeeded him, increased the amount of work being done to remove a recalcitrant mountain range while also overseeing the construction of the dams and locks. The control of the renowned Panama Canal, which was first opened in 1914, was given to Panama in 1999 by the United States. Was the Panama Canal built when? At least as early as the 1500s, people began to consider building a waterway across the Panama Isthmus to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. King Charles I of Spain instructed his regional governor to map out a path down the Chagres River when explorer Vasco Núñez de Balboa recognized there was just a little strip of land separating the two oceans. Even though it was thought at the time to be unfeasible, the thought of a possible shortcut from Europe to Eastern Asia over the rugged, tropical landscape remained alluring. The only other options were to use the treacherous, unpredictable Strait of Magellan to circumnavigate South America or to transport people and cargo across the ocean using the Panama Railroad. The first nation to try the challenge was ultimately France. Construction on a proposed sea-level canal began in 1880 under the direction of Count Ferdinand de Lesseps, who also oversaw the construction of Egypt's Suez Canal. The French realized right away the enormous task that lay before them, there was no way to stop the spread of yellow fever and malaria, in addition to the relentless rains that led to severe landslides. After realizing too late that building a sea-level canal would be too challenging, de Lesseps refocused his efforts on building a lock canal however, funding for the project was cut off in 1888. Panama Canal Risks The mountain range between Gamboa and Pedro Miguel, known as Culebra Cut, was the center of Gothel's attention. Up to 6,000 men were employed at any given moment to excavate the roughly 9-mile length, which turned into a 24-hour operation. Culebra Cut was a notorious risk zone despite the effort put into this stage of the project, as the number of fatalities from dynamite explosions and unforeseen landslides grew. With the pouring of concrete at Gatton in August 1909, work on the locks officially began. The locks were constructed in pairs, with 110 foot wide by 1,000 foot long chambers for each lock gravity was used to raise and lower water levels using culverts built into the locks. In the end, the canal's three locks raised ships 85 feet above sea level to the artificial Gatton Lake in the middle additionally, hollow, buoyant lock gates with heights ranging from 47 to 82 feet were constructed. The control board, which managed the entire operation, was powered by electricity finishing the Panama Canal in 1913 saw the start of the project's closure. In May, the last spillway at Gate Dam was shut to allow the lake to fill to its full height a few weeks later, two steam shovels moving in opposite directions met in the middle of Culebra Cut. In October, the Gamboa Dyke blew up due to a telegraph signal sent from the White House by President Woodrow Wilson, flooding the last section of Culebra Cut's dry tunnel. Despite the ceremonial celebration being scaled back due to the start of World War I, the Panama Canal was finally opened on August 15, 1914. It was the most costly building project ever finished in the history of the United States, costing more than $350 million. The locks were constructed using around 3.4 million cubic meters of concrete in total, while the American construction phase required the excavation of close to 240 million cubic yards of rock and mud. On the other hand, the Panama Canal construction cost many lives, approximately 5,600 of the 56,000 laborers hired between 1904 and 1913 supposedly died. Although the actual number is probably much higher given that the French only kept track of hospital mortality. The US spent $375 million on the Panama Canal, which includes the $10 million Panama paid and the $40 million the French were reimbursed for when they abandoned the project. It was the most costly building venture in American history at the time. The United States continues to be the Panama Canal's biggest user. 66% of the canal's cargo traffic started or finished at a U.S. port, compared to 13% of the traffic that was made up of cargo going to or from China. So, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Use the comment section below to tell us what you think about the video. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of all the latest videos.